That's so cool. So we're going to have somebody come out and take a look at it tomorrow when it's turned off for now. So now we just have to wait for everything to dissipate, but it's a whole lot better than it was just a, just a little while ago. So a couple of announcements. Uh, don't forget about the, uh, uh, they have a reminder in there about the lap blanket party that the women will be having. Uh, any hands that they can get would be greatly appreciated. Operation Christmas Child is next, is that Sunday? 388? Okay, next Sunday will be the assembly time. Uh, it's also the first Sunday of Undie Sunday, so there's an insert in there you can take a look at the things they're looking for. We're also uh, looking for candy and treats for the trunk or treat, and also looking for people to volunteer to bring their cars. Or you can just set up a table, that can be a car, where the kids can go and uh, do their trick or treat. I think that's all I have by way of announcements. And I'm out of breath from all this running around. Anyone else? Miss Marsha. Good morning, uh, Marsha. We're going to talk about the anniversary coming up in two weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have about 65 people so far that have RSVP for our German Fest on Friday night. And I know a number of people have yet to reserve. I also want to share with you that uh, two farmer pastors, David Petit and Jan Johnson, will be here that Friday at the German Fest with us. Um, I'm hoping maybe a few more can come. I haven't heard, but I think that's pretty fun. Also, about 65 so far reserved for Sunday. We just need numbers for food, because you know it's all about food. Um, and there's a reminder here. I'll be back if you want, if you want to reserve. Uh, here, you can, we'll take it up to the 16th, and if you forget, and it's the 17th, you certainly don't care. But um, just encourage you, and also, I also want to share some friends of the church. They're not all members that are coming, but people who attend here once in a while are coming. So if you have friends that would like to join us on that Friday night or Sunday, they're certainly more than welcome. I'm real excited that friends feel comfortable coming and, and, and having fellowship with us. Lastly, uh, the anniversary committee's pretty busy right now, and we're looking for someone who has some skill that can maybe download some music for us for Friday night. Uh, we've got the speakers, but we just need it on an iPad or computer or something. Uh, so just some background music and so on. Of course, there'll be a few focus too and things like that. But anyway, if anybody's willing to do that, let me know and we'll sure you should talk there. I've got some cool music for you to play. <laughs> you didn't say it, bro. <laughs>
sisters, we come from many houses. Welcome to this household, the house of God. Here we hear words that are alive. Here we experience grace that makes our heart glad. God offers light to our eyes. Christ brings wisdom to our hearts and minds. God's teachings are sweeter than honey. Even the honey dripping off the honeycomb. They are more precious than precious than gold. Even the mothers of your gold. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the house of God. We are here to offer our thanks and praise to God. Now we join in a hymn of place. Page 1801, this is the day. Please stand if you are in.
concerns or joys that we may have in our lives and in our hearts. So at this time, I would invite any that feel so led to, uh, to lift up and share with the congregation joys and concerns of your life. Yeah, all right, hold on. She's coming. Can I say something? Oh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody to say a especially big, humongous thank you to God for not letting fire destroy this church this morning. These windows alone, uh, now I know because my son-in-law is doing this kind of work, they are prices I don't think we could afford to replace those windows. So please remember and say thank you, God. Thank you. Lord, your mercy. And your Just asking for prayers of strength and um, another word I can't think of right now. For all those who are running the Chicago Marathon this morning. Endurance. Craig? Endurance. There, that's the word. Insanity. What are you running? 26 miles over. <laughs>
she's doing fundraisers helps support her because it helps pay the way. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. And, and we will expect to be hearing from you soon, right, about ways that we can help out. That's great. More under your book, more under your mercy. I'm just going to stand here. Las Vegas, but 
think that doesn't really do it any of the people that were just brutally slaughtered and murdered and gunned down. The 58 people that are doing nothing more than going to a country music festival and enjoying a, a, a fun, fun evening of fellowship and food and, and music. Um, just, just an unbelievably senseless, pointless, and, and nobody yet has been able to understand what the motive for it was other than just a very angry, sick person. But we want to keep, obviously, the families of those that passed away. We want to keep away those that are still in the hospital and are still, still struggling with healing from wounds and their family. And, and the whole Las Vegas community, uh, something like that happens and it cannot help but, uh, but affect everybody that's there. So we want to lift up our thoughts and our prayers for them in the, in the days and the weeks to come as they uh, find ways to deal with this tragedy. Uh, Lord, your mercy.
We give you thanks for this glorious, glorious day. We give you thanks for this community, this family of believers. We give you thanks for this, this sanctuary, for this church. We give you thanks for the first responders of our community that, that came so quickly and so thoroughly to, to watch over us and to make sure that, uh, that all would be safe to find the problem and to, uh, to allow us to go on with our worship today. We ask that you, you be with them this day and all the days that they serve, that they may be, they may be kept safe and secure and every night ready to go home to their families. God, you've heard a whole bunch of concerns and joys from this congregation. And we know that even before we, we uttered them, gave them voice, that you knew of them. Because you are there, you, you are within us. You know what we think as we think and what we feel as we feel. We thank you for your presence, for your strength, for your wisdom, for your all-embracing love for us when we are in times of need. For we know that you will be with all those that we have lifted up in prayer, all those that are suffering loss or illness or injury or whatever, whatever tragedy or bad circumstances are in our lives, we know that you are there. We also give you thanks for your presence in our lives as we celebrate. As we celebrate new life, anniversaries, birthdays, just the joy of being together. For we know that it is in you that true joy really comes. And it is when we are in the midst of our of our church family that we can share, that we can openly share our concerns and our joys, that we feel safe enough to, to lift up and to share our, our fears and our vulnerabilities, knowing that all that here will, will be there for us, for you have brought us together to uplift each other, to share with each other, to console each other, and to rejoice with each other. We pray that we might find the strength and the courage to go out into the world where there are so many people missing a community or a family like this, that we will invite them in, that we will go to them, we will not wait for them to come to us, and that we will be ready to open our arms to them, whatever, whatever their, their race or gender or, or ethnic background or sexual orientation or even faith system, that we are here with open hearts and open arms ready to welcome any and all of your children, our sisters, and our brothers. O Holy One, we lift this prayer up to you and share it as we have our concerns and our joys. Can we bring them all to you when we pray together in one voice? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before Bilsa comes up and reads the Hebrew scriptures, I just I had said that we were going to be uh, leaving on Thursday to go, uh, to go back to Cleveland to preach. Obviously, that means we won't be having Bible study. So just, just so that's set out there, anybody that, that comes on Thursday, we'll make sure they know. Uh, and if you were to be coming to the Thursday evening ones, we'll start the week after that. Today, <clears throat> the reading comes from Hebrew Scriptures, Exodus 20, verses 1 through 4 and 7 to 9 and 
me. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of thy, the name <coughs> of the Lord of your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hear what the Spirit says to the church.
And they get summed up by Jesus as love God. And you look at the other seven, love everybody else. They're really pretty simple. Not while it's hard for us to remember ten, especially in the right order, I think most of us could be able to love God, love everybody else. We talked about it before. And that was set by God through these Ten Commandments that were given to Moses. And it did help to, to create, to bring about an entity that, that became defined as the people of Israel. And then the Jewish nation. And today, the Jewish state. So that the, the Ten Commandments are looked at as as how the other 613 laws of the Torah have come into being. Now, I, I'm not saying anything's better or worse. I'm just saying different. We have a different understanding, or at least we need, we should, if we are to be faithful, have a different understanding of the, these ten rules and laws. Because as you read through the Gospels, we hear repeatedly, let's just take one. It says here, you shall not murder. Now, everybody thinks, well, it says you shall not kill. Well, it doesn't say you shall not kill. The word is very, very deliberate. It's distinct. It's murder. Because God could not say you shall not kill. Because what does God have the people of Israel do after they get into the promised land? Well, he has them kill everybody that gets in the way. God says, go to that city and wipe them out. Kill every man, woman, child, dog, cat, ferret, moose, everything that's there, wipe them out. And the one time that Saul, who was the king, whom God had appointed, did not follow that rule and kept alive the, the, the leader of that town so that he could hold it for ransom and get something for him, through the prophet Samuel, excuse me, Saul was told by God, okay, your line is done, you're finished, I'm going to get a new king, David's going to do it, and you and your son are really going to suffer, and they died horrible deaths. Because they did not obey this dictate that came from God. I'm not making anything up. Don't shoot the messenger. Read the book. To kill everybody. And God does that many, many times. As a matter of fact, God does the same thing in the, in the New Testament when we misread the book of Revelation. And John tells us that God will smite everyone that does not call upon Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And again, anyone that doesn't believe will be wiped out. Men, women, children, young, old, dogs, cats, carrots, and moose. Now, if we read this from our Christian understanding and perspective from the teachings of Jesus, Jesus takes this one and says, okay, You've heard it say, do not murder. Now that's, that's a particular kind of kill. I say, do not kill. Well, now all of a sudden we've taken it from something that breaks the law to something that actually all throughout human history has been made lawful. And that's killing. We kill in wars. The object of war is to shoot, to kill more of the enemy than they kill of you, so that you might then impose your will upon those people with which you are in conflict. Police officers. Will often, when called upon, and me too, kill a suspect. Now, I, I, please, don't misunderstand. I am not putting any value judgment on these whatsoever. This is just a statement of fact that nobody, nobody can argue with. If somebody does a particularly heinous crime, then the state will put them to death. 
through electrocution or through lethal injection or whatever, whatever way is in vogue. It was hanging, it was beheading, it was stoning. But this was done by the state and it was seen to be right and legal and kosher. If Jesus is taken from murder to killing, which now, if, if we are to be faithful, then we need to look at society and we need to look at the way society interacts with each other and see if it actually fits what Jesus says and teaches. See, all too often we, in today's culture and society, especially in America, Whenever it fits our purposes, we will fall back on the Old Testament. An eye for an eye. They did this to us, we're going to do this to them. Hans Gandhi said, an eye for an eye only makes for a blind world. Because everybody's striking back at each other. We will look at we will look at homosexual relationships. And we will go to the Old Testament. We will go to Leviticus and say, see, it's an abomination. It says right there, man that lies with a man shall be stoned and shall be killed. Okay, yeah, it does say that. No disputing that fact. But how do we understand these things now from our Christian perspective? One of the things that we as a society and a culture have done, and this, this goes way back to 1313 when Constantine won his battle and became basically the emperor of the Roman Empire. And he said, hey, Christianity, they're okay. Mom's a Christian, so we're going to make Christianity legal. And all of a sudden, now, like the Ten Commandments came to help bring an understanding of community and order to the Hebrew people, this new group of Christians that had hidden for so many hundreds of years, now all of a sudden they had to decide how they were going to, how they were going to order themselves, what the hierarchy was going to be. And what did they do? Well, they looked at the government and they set up a system of, of liturgical governance that was just like the empire. See, as soon as we did that, we were on a slippery slope down. Jesus made very clear there is only one emperor, there's only one king, there's only one ruler, and that's God. And we all, we all stand before God, we all come to God in prayer as equals. And as equally responsible for living and sharing and witnessing the teachings of Christ, which were his understanding and teachings from God. So Jesus keeps taking it one step further, one step further. Okay, Moses said, do not murder. Great, love it, it's fine. I'm telling you, do not kill. Now, it would be okay if we left it there, but no, Jesus takes it a couple steps further so that when he gets done on just this one commandment, if you call your brother or sister a fool, it is the same as if you have killed him. Now, raise your hand, and I, I really mean this. I want you to raise your hand if you have never never looked at anybody ever and thought, oh my gosh, what a doofus. Raise your hand. Raise them high. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Did you ever think something bad about somebody? Okay, you're, you're, you're with the rest of us. She had me worried there. I thought we had to say, you know, so I was saying, oh my boy. Okay, but see, we've all done this. So we can look at the Ten Commandments, we can go back to there and go, okay, I'm safe. I've never murdered anybody. 
And see, this is, this is what we as Christians do. We, we cherry pick what we want to believe and what we don't want to believe, what we follow and what we don't want to follow. We go back to the Old Testament whenever it suits our purposes. But I wish you could have seen your faces when I told you about God telling Saul to destroy, to completely obliterate. And not just to kill everything that was living, but to burn it all down, to raise it to the ground. These are the words of God. And you all just kind of, and if you had never, ever thought anything bad about any up until that moment, I know you were thinking it about me. <laughs> about you bringing up and saying something like this. But it's true. It's a part of our history. And that's fine. But we need to understand that for us as Christians, and again, no value judgment whatsoever, but we have gone a different direction from this. We have said, yes, yes, these rules, these teachings from the Old Testament, they are good, they are important, because they were Jesus. But Jesus took these rules, and he took them a step further. And if, if we are to call ourselves children of God, disciples of Christ, then we need to realize that, that we need to look at these things, and then how they are understood and interpreted by Jesus. So yes, the Ten Commandments are important. Yes, the Ten Commandments are, have been understood to be a basis for Western civilization and Western law. I mean, that's all great, that's all fine. But a basis just like it was for Jesus. Now the question for us, each and every one of us here, the question for us is, are we just going to leave it, are we going to just stay here and keep it there? Because if that's the case, then there's a really nice synagogue that I visited not too far down the street. And that would be wonderful. God love you. But if we, and I use this word deliberately, if we dare to call ourselves Christian, we have no choice. But to understand that Jesus took these laws so, so much further. And he called us as individuals, and he called us as a community to a way of life that transcends the Ten Commandments, that is the foundation for them, yes, but builds upon them. So that we don't worry about whether or not we've murdered somebody. But how many people are killed in our name by our society and by our culture? And even then, we just don't let it go with that. But we look at our own personal relationships and the way that we deal with, with people and with all of God's creation. It's hard. It really is. And I, I, I made this really, really clear that this was the direction of my understanding of, of the church and our call through Christ by God when I gave my trial sermon here and titled it, It Don't Come Easy. And that's what we talked about. And y'all voted overwhelmingly to have me here. So if you don't like what I'm saying, it's your fault. <laughs> we we try not to the best of our abilities but we, we do try to be good people and that's that's one that's great but we are called to be better We are called to be a better group of people. We are called not, not to live by the laws of old, but rather by the laws of the new covenant. 
our understanding of God and God's word may manifest, may Emmanuel for us when Jesus was born in that stable some 2,000 years ago. So I invite us, I, I encourage us to read, to read our history which is what the Old Testament is for us, the Hebrew Scriptures. It's to honor it, to, to cherish it. This is the basis for, for the faith upon which we have come. But we realize that, well, that we have chose to go a different way. That for our Jewish sisters and brothers, the Torah, as shared by Moses, is, is that which is binding. Wonderful, great. But we want a different way. And for us, it's the understanding and the teachings of Jesus built upon the foundation of the Torah.
So with gratitude in our hearts, may we give generously this day. May our lives.